In this one, Nicolas Cage is trying to clap his daughter, and I'm here for it. We kick off with this absolute train wreck, literally, of a scene. A lady parks her car on a railway line and then just bails, leaving her baby inside. In case you're thinking, oh, maybe she just had to grab her triple shot skinny mocha frappuccino with extra caramel drizzle that she left on the roof. Nope. She just walks away, baby and all. Then we cut to Carly, your everyday teenage girl, probably posting this whole ordeal on TikTok while on the phone with her boyfriend, Damon. We meet the parents, Brent and Kendall, your typical suburban folks who can't start their day without a good old toast and jam breakfast. There's also a maid, Sunye, and her daughter, Lisa, who seem to be living their own version of Downtown Abbey in the suburbs. As they're munching away, they watch a news report about the same train car baby collision. Talk about a mood killer. Carly, unfazed, asks to take her boyfriend home tonight, but is shot down faster than a UFO in Area 51. It's dinner with the grandparents instead. Not exactly a ranger, but hey, who can resist grandma's apple pie? Then we see Carly and her mom, Kendall, en route to school. Kendall is trying to bond, but Carly is more interested in her group chat's latest meme war. Kendall mentions her sister's due to give birth soon, but Carly shows about as much interest as a cat does in a bath. Meanwhile, Josh, the classic homeschooler, is knocking his dad on the head with a ball. His dad gives him the death stare, but then cracks up laughing, probably because he's just realized he's living in a slapstick comedy. After the usual morning antics, dad's off to work. Cut to Carly's school where we meet Riley, Carly's classmate. On the other side of town, Kendall's grabbing a post-dance class cocktail with Riley's mom. Riley's mom drops the bombshell that Carly's been dipping into her daughter's piggy bank. Kendall, doing her best impression of a defense attorney, tries to justify Carly's petty theft. Back in school, it's like a game of musical chairs. The classroom fun rings. A kid gets up and leaves, rinse and repeat. Cops are showing up, parents are climbing fences and getting arrested. All short of a zombie apocalypse, really. Meanwhile, Damon's just finished an exam and is probably wondering if he accidentally walked onto the set of an action movie. The whole school's in chaos, but there's no natural disaster inside. Parents are freaking out like it's Black Friday and their kids are the last flat screen TVs. In this cacophony, a brave young lad makes a run for it and scales the fence to get to his mom. That's one way to avoid detention, I guess. He scales it like a mini Spider-Man, but the plot twist comes when his mom stabs him with a car key. Talk about a key rhyme. C c crime. Am I right? <laughs> Things go from bad to straight up chaotic as parents swarm the school, zombie style. Some students aren't quite fast enough and meet a grisly end. The cops try their best, but they're about as useful as a chocolate teapot. Carly and Riley find an escape route that's refreshingly parent free. Meanwhile, Damon returns home to a disaster zone, does a quick cleanup, and suddenly his dad goes all fight club on him. After a glass bottle attack and a wild chase, Damon's dad ends up accidentally stabbing himself in the neck. I hate when that happens. <coughs> Kendall, feeling all the mom guilt, cries in her car over her daughter's rebellious waves. Then she gets a call from her sister who is about to pop out a baby. Carly and Riley head to Riley's place where the vibe is more 420 friendly than white picket fence. Carly discovers a news report about the mass parent freakout, but there's still no explanation for it. Upstairs, Riley's mom is waiting in her room with a picture of the two of them. Creepy much? Carly goes to check on Riley, only to find out that she's been killed by her own mom. Plot twist level? M. Night Shyamalan. Kendall arrives at the hospital and starts connecting the dots from the TV news reports. It turns out some evil group has been cooking up a neurotoxin that makes parents want to kill their kids instead of loving and protecting them. It's like they went to a how-to-be-a-supervillain workshop and took it to heart. Kendall's sister gives birth, and the baby gets a warm yet horrifying welcome. The new mom hugs the baby with the force of a WWE wrestler and then tries to stab it. Kendall springs into action, snatching the baby away like it's the last piece of cake at a party. Carly, now running for her life, witnesses a dad going full Negan on his son with a baseball bat. Yup, things have definitely taken a turn for the worse. Enter our hero Damon like a pop-up ad on a boring webpage. Carly and him start cooking up a rescue plan for Josh, who's chilling at home, probably leveling up in some online game. Cut to Carly's dad, marooned in the office. Dude looks like he's just run a marathon with a photocopier on his back. His phone buzzes. It's wifey, probably calling to remind him to get milk or something, but he swipes left faster than on a bad Tinder match. Suddenly, the office TV goes berserk, channeling its inner poltergeist. Carly's dad screams like he's just seen the last season of his favorite TV show canceled. In hospital land, the nurse is trying to convince Kendall to hand over her baby. Kendall's holding onto the baby like it's the last slice of pizza. But Officer Buzzkill steps in and she passes the baby over. Meanwhile, a troop of parents are ogling their newborns like they found a rare Pokemon. Kendall dials up Sunny, who's at home practicing her housemaid audition, to check in. Kendall's worried her hubby will get home first and turn Josh into a human pinata. She peels out for home. Meanwhile, Damon and Carly are skulking around outside, seeing only Sunny's ride in the driveway. Inside, Sunny's doing her best Cinderella impression. She's baffled in Carly's home early. Carly starts the interrogation, but then spots Sunny's cleaning rag. Looks like she's just murdered a ketchup bottle. Then the penny drops. Sunny's gone all Game of Thrones on her own daughter. Carly boots her out faster than an uninvited pop-up. Carly then scoots upstairs to find Josh, who's taken up residence under the bed. Josh spills the beans on the whole bloody spectacle he witnessed. Carly, now sporting her big sister cape, tells Josh they've got to bounce before mom and dad get back. Downstairs, Damon's surprise visit doesn't go down well with Carly's dad. A few harsh words are exchanged, and Damon ends up on the receiving end of a right hook. 
Carly and Josh have no choice but to give their dad the slip, thanks to a strategically placed toy car. Score one for Hot Wheels. Dad face plants into the kitchen floor. The siblings make like ninjas and squirrel themselves away in the basement. In the meantime, Carly's mom, who's been cruising home, nearly pancakes a kid who's been nudged into the road by his own mom. Kendall comes home to find her hobby playing Sleeping Beauty on the floor. Suddenly, Kendall's attitude does a 180. Now it's like a messed up episode of Family Feud, where the parents team up to off their kids. Talk about taking tough love to the extreme. Picture this, mom's in the basement, trying to cajole Carly and Josh into joining civilization again. Carly, guilty as a kid caught with her hand in the cookie jar, apologizes to her mother for swiping some cash. Mom plays it cool, pulling out the no worries card, but her one condition? They've got to escape the depths of the basement. Carly, however, is not having it. She's staying put and suggests that her mom should be the one to relocate. Like, permanently. Dad hears this and goes from zero to Hulk in seconds flat, demanding the door be opened. Frustrated, Carly's mom grabs a tool to bust open the door, like she's in a low-budget heist movie. Seeing his breaking and entering isn't their forte. Dad goes for his trusty Plan B, his under-the-bed firearm. The plot twist, the gun is gone. Suddenly, a scream rings out. Kendall, the mother, has been shot. And who's the culprit? None other than pint-sized Josh, who's been sneakily hoarding Dad's gun. Dad wasn't exactly James Bond with his security measures. His suitcase pin was Josh's birthday. Classic parental oversight. Fast forward and our so-called loving parents have cooked up a scheme straight out of a B-list horror movie. They're going to fumigate the basement, with their kids in it. As Kendall's pulling the gas hose, she recoils from the garbage can's aroma. It's worse than last week's tuna surprise. Lo and behold, inside the bin is the decomposing body of the maid's son. Guess they forgot to take out the trash. With the pipe secured and the hole sealed, Dad turns on the gas. Carly, puzzled, feels around the door. A move that nearly costs her a finger as Kendall tries to recreate a scene from Psycho. The parents settle in for the long wait, but Carly and Josh aren't about to play the sitting ducks. Meanwhile, Josh is coughing like he's auditioning for a flu commercial, and Carly too. But our girl Carly, resourceful as ever, finds a vent for a daring escape. And for the grand finale, she devises a MacGyver-style trap involving matches. The aim? Ensuring a fiery welcome for the parents when they finally open the door. As the coughing reaches a crescendo, Dad's ready to brave the basement. Meet hammer in hand. Carly and Josh, meanwhile, have ninjured their way out. The door bursts open, setting off the matchstick booby trap. Dad is welcomed with a face full of flame. Talk about hot-headed. Sometime later, Kendall wakes up, looking for her kids like they're the last donuts in the box. Carly, fresh from her ceiling leap, make a noise that Kendall picks up. Kendall zeroes in on her like a shark who smelled blood, and the chase is on. Move over, Tom and Jerry. Carly bolts to her room like a caffeinated squirrel and locks herself in. But her mom, like a determined stage 5 clinger, manages to get in. Carly bites her mom's arm, clearly not a fan of hugs. Damon wakes up and tries to help Carly, probably regretting that all-nighter on a Netflix show. After a WWE-worthy struggle, they shove Kendall into the closet. You'd think she'd be exhausted, but suddenly she pulls a DIY ninja move and attacks him with a broken coat rack. She stabs Damon in the cheek, which, let's be real, is not the best look for him. Carly and Josh make a run for it, but find their dad, who's back in action like a 90s action hero. The two kids are chased by their parents until they're cornered. Then the doorbell rings. Saved by the bell. Kendall remembers Carly's grandparents are coming for dinner. Talk about awkward timing. Dad answers the door and bam, Grandma Pepper sprays him like it's self-defense class. Carly's grandpa goes full-on action hero mode and stabs his son with a knife. But this guy just won't quit. Dad starts chasing little Josh again, while Grandpa and Dad duke it out like they're in a bad reality TV show. Panicking, Josh hides in Dad's favored car, hoping his new fort will keep him safe. Grandpa's still going after his son and Kendall's trying to stop her in-laws from playing a game of who can kill my husband first. Kendall then resumes her pursuit of Carly, smacking her in the head with a hammer. Ouch. Just in time, Grandma arrives like a senior citizen superhero, trying to stop her. Meanwhile, Carly's dad starts the car engine and hits her mom without hesitation, not exactly earning that world's best dad mug. Grandpa's thrown out of the car and dies on impact. Carly wakes up and it's round two with Kendall, but Damon swoops in like an exhausted Avenger and whacks her with a hoe. The teens tie up Carly's parents in the basement, turning their home into a makeshift prison. When the parents wake up and beg to be freed, Carly's not having it because she knows they've gone full zombie mode. As the parents explode in anger, Carly and Josh ugly cry, regretting not appreciating their folks more. Through the tears, the parents confess their love, but admit that sometimes, the thought of offing their kids does cross their minds. But a heartwarming family moment. Moral of the story? Nicolas Cage. Also, that slap was majestic. 